Hello, Year 7. I'm Miss Baptiste. I'm going to carry on reading A Good Day for Climbing Trees, Chapter 13. The Heart of a Tree. In the middle of the night, a rustling sound woke me. I opened my eyes and pricked up my ears, but I didn't move or get up from the ground. The park was dead quiet. In the faint moonlight, I saw Layla get down from the tree. Maybe she wanted to go to the loo. I probably should have offered to walk with her in the dark, but decided to wait for a moment. When she was on the ground, she cautiously looked in my direction. I didn't move. Earlier in the year, our class had gone on a zoo snooze. There were special red lights in the cages of the nocturnal animals so we could watch them as they move about. Layla moved as agilely and softly as a Jeanette in the dark. She went silent, silently over to her mum. Gently, she got hold of the corner of the blanket and pulled it over her mum, who stirred slightly in her sleep. Layla squatted next to her. It was difficult to see exactly what she was doing, but it looked as if she was just sitting there, staring at her mum. She remained like that for quite a while before she raised her hand and stroked her mum's hair. Then she got up. Manus, she whispered to me. Come. I gasped. How did she know I was awake? Without a word, I followed her back up the tree. My bum must have grown accustomed to sitting uncomfortably because I quickly eased into my usual position on the branch. When both of us were seated, Layla switched on a torch. That afternoon, her mum remembered to bring a torch from home, but I hadn't seen Layla bring it in bringing it into the tree with her. I took a deep breath and before I could stop myself, I asked a question that had been bugging me for the past three days. It was probably the most obvious question to ask when you spend three nights in a tree house with someone. But until th that moment, I hadn't mustered the courage to do so. Layla, I whispered, why are you really doing this? What? she asked. You know what I mean. I knew she was acting dumb on purpose. The tree. Why this tree? Why not the sweet fawn or the blue, the one of the, or one of the blue gums or the white stinkwood? I've already told you, said Layla because this was the first tree you learned to climb, to climb, I asked. Because it's the tree at the center of the universe. Layla leaned back against the tree trunk. You're stranded on an island and you have only three things with you, she said, ignoring my question. I had noticed that she was quite good at that. A kitchen dishcloth, a torch, a packet of raisin. What would you do with them? I, hear, I heard plastic tear and she held a packet of raisin out to me. I took a handful. You think cannibals eat raisins? I asked. Maybe, she said. If you can convince them that they are dried eyeballs or something like that, I laugh. When she spoke again, her voice was a mere whisper. My dad came up with the island game. It eats up boring kilometers when you on when you when you are on a long road trip. My island always had cannibals and I always used my free things to become 
a cannibal princess. When it was my mum's turn, George Clooney always showed up miraculously to save her. And then she'd use her free things to make up life on the island as much fun as possible for him. My dad always pretended that it made him terribly jealous. He always used his free things to make incredibly clever and weird plans to get home again. Your dad? I asked cautiously. He taught me how to climb a tree, she said. He always said we had a baboon blood in our veins. In the evenings, before bedtime, we sometimes came to play here in the park and then we would climb to the top of the tree and he'd show me the stars and tell me stories of cannibal princesses and dragons and mermaids and white girls with baboon blood and trees that can talk, that can walk and talk. I didn't ask any more questions because she seems to be speaking to herself. Want to see something? She said, she asked. I nodded slightly, surprised that she knew I was still there. She handed me the torch. Then she got to her feet on the branch. Watch out, I said. If she fell, she would break her neck. Shine over here, she said, and push a branch aside. I searched with the torch until I found the spot she was indicating. I was surprised to see that something had been carved into the bark. W plus M. There were reddish brown cuts in the, in the dark trunk. Carefully, I straightened myself on the branch to see better. It was a heart. It looked like someone had carved it with a pocket knife. It seems like the deep cuts in the trunk has healed a long time ago. Something was written inside the heart. W plus M. This only became my tree for climbing later on, she said, La said Layla. Before I was born, this was my mum and dad's tree. He carved his letters for her. Layla asked a sleepy voice from behind us. I got up, I got such a fright that I nearly lost my balance. Is everything okay? We are okay, ma'am, I answered shakily. A panic fall crossed my mind. What if Leila's mum thinks we were busy with, well, kissing lessons? I sank back on the branch. Layla switched off the torch. It took a while for my eyes to get used to the dark again. Above us, stars were peeping through the leaves here and there. My dad dubbed my mum. Layla's voice, just a whisper for another woman.